Hello guys and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and spent all of our time with Yuri. Which sucks, because that means we left Natsuki all alone. So, I'm not sure how she's gonna react when we get to talk to her again. So, let's go ahead and just jump right into it and start out with Natsuki. Let's just rip that band-aid off. Hmm. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. This is the text that Natsuki gives you when she's when you f start by making a poem specifically for her, but then you make a really crappy poem for her, like a Yuri poem. Uh, not to say that a Yuri poem is crappy, but she certainly doesn't like it, which is really interesting. So it seems that even though we as the player are choosing to go on Natsuki's route, the game is forcing us to go on Yuri's route. Then again, if it, this one is, was as good as your last one, I would be completely pissed. Well, I guess I wanted to try something a little different this time. Fair enough, you're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. I mean, everyone in the club writes really differently from each other. Maybe you'll find a little influence from all of us. For instance, I noticed that you were spending some time with Yuri today. Uh-oh. Not that I care who you spend your time with. After all, I was taught never to expect anything from anybody. So it's not like I was waiting for you or anything. Still, you should at least look over my poem. You'll probably be able to learn something from it. Huh. This poem is called Adra Thrine Let's read it, shall we? So the solvent killer in Ida Bam. Shot was Nessam for Nishnets and her whiff is it. Fiend of the Nick service and Nest did leave me. Pretty cool poem. MC. Why, why didn't you come read with me today? I was wa waiting for you. I, I was waiting for a long time. It was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Why did you ruin it? Do you like Yuri more? I think you're better off not associating with her. Are you listening to me? Yuri is a sick freak. And that should be obvious by now. So just play with me instead. Okay? You don't hate me, do you, MC? Do you hate me? Do you want me to go home crying? The club is the only place I feel safe. Don't ruin that for me. Don't ruin it, please. Just stop talking to Yuri. Play with me instead. It's all I have. Play with me. Play with me. Huh, so we just have Monica's poem to look at next. Hi, MC. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright! Great job, MC. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know what, Yuri? You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism? Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is just totally detached from reality. I don't mean that like it's a bad thing, though. But sometimes I get the impression that she's just totally given up on people. She spends so much time in her own head that it's probably a much more interesting place for her. But that's why she, she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Like earlier, I think if she gets too stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for alone time. Suddenly the door opens. Yuri! I'm back! Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started sharing our poems with each other. Eh? Already? I I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, so I'm more than glad that you took all the time you needed. 
All right. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should get my go get my poem now. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. This one is called Save Me. The colors, they won't bright beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, and endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop, violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a knife on a breathing ribcage, an endless poem of meaningless Delete her. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to... Um... Well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when... Um... Who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Please help me. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Hmm. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri smiles and takes a deep breath. I like just holding it. Ah, uh, I mean, the poem turned out good. It's, uh, well, there are some things that you could work on, but that doesn't really matter. It feels like anything written by you is a treasure. <laughs> that came out a little awkward. Let's move on. Here's the poem I wrote. You don't have to like it or anything. Wheel. A rotating wheel. Turning on an axle. Grinding. Bolt head. Linear gearbox. Falling sky, seven holy stakes, a docked ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a torn harness, parabolic gearbox, expanding universe, time controlled by slipping cogwheels, existence of God, swimming with open water in all directions, drowning, a prayer written in blood, a prayer written in time devouring snakes with human eyes. A thread connecting all living human eyes, a kaleidoscope of holy stakes, exponential gearbox, a sky of exploding stars, God disproving the existence of God, a wheel rotating in six dimensions, forty gears and a ticking clock, a clock that ticks one ev second for every rotation of the planet, a clock that ticks forty times every time it ticks every second time. A bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a docked ship to another world. A kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks. A time-devouring prayer connecting a sky of forty gears and open human eyes in all directions. <sighs> breathing gearbox, breathing bolt head, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing snakes, breathing god, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing prayer, breathing sky, breathing wheel. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your on your pen. Ah, uh, uh, that is, a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and I am um, just really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. What did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. Things I like about Papa. I like when Papa comes home early. I like when Papa cooks me dinner. I like when Papa gives me allowance. I like when Papa spends time with me. I like when Papa asks me about my friends. I like when Papa asks me about anything. I like when Papa gives me m lunch money. I like when Papa comes home before sundown. 
I like when Papa cooks. I like when Papa gives me privacy. I like when Papa doesn't tell me how to dress. I like when Papa doesn't comment on my friends. I like when Papa doesn't comment on my hobbies. I like when Papa comes home without waking me up. I like when Papa keeps food in the house. I like when Papa uses his inside voice. I like when Papa leaves my stuff alone. I like when Papa accidentally drops coins in the couch. I like when Papa is too tired to notice me. I like when Papa is too tired for anything. I like when Papa is too tired for anything. Oh, okay, uh, good thing that this is capturing on OBS. Uh, my mouse cursor has turned into a glitchy Sayori. Uh, which is quite weird. Also, after you get the second secret poem, there's a chance that, uh, you'll also get this red effect that goes over the screen and the sound gets kind of muted and then it slowly fades out and you just hear this weird like squelching like noise this weird like gross sound and it only goes away after you click so go ahead and look that up on youtube it's really like weird i'll just should i just put this in the corner so that it's not like on screen all the time or something like that i'll just I'll just put her in the corner over here. It's like Sayori's still with us. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today, so if everyone could come sit in the front of the room. Oh, and it went away. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since MC joined and we've started with some club activities, but this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members and the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? The literature club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do, so that's why we should work hard and put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right, MC? Uh... Oh, come on! You can't take advantage of MC to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica, do you really think any of us here joined the club with other people in mind? Yuri never even talked until MC joined. As for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And MC isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're the president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Monica's clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's... not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and MC want to get more members too. Right? I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue this situation... Um, no. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club... It's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way as I did? But that doesn't mean we're against getting new members or anything. MC, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well... That's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this, anyway? 
What if starting this club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't... There aren't many other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me. She's not taking anything away. No, MC. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one... I mean... At least for a little bit of time... Things were nice. Natsuki starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like... I don't belong here right now. Natsuki... Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out of the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, uh, do you have an opinion on the festival? I, I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious brat? I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. But what about you, MC? What do you want to get out of this club? Yuri repeats the same question as Monica. I decide giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along. And for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the, qu rather the quality of each member. That's what'll end up making the Literature Club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. Also, Yuri Yurai is bleeding. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So if you would like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. Alright. Well, maybe we can talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. Hey, Yuri? Eh? Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday, but I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also a wonderful friend. Monica! I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever. Okay? M me too. Yeah, let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay, I look forward to it. Shall we go, MC? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm going to chat a little bit with MC before we leave, just to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay, I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Monica waves as Yuri exits the classroom. Phew. Things have been a little hectic lately, haven't they? MC, I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. I feel kind of like I'm responsible for that as president. And I really do care about you, you know? I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With how mean Natsuki is and everything. And Yuri being a little... you know... <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. You know what I mean? But it's weird because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. Uh, I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. There are just some things that I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things I know only you could understand. So that's why... Wait, not yet. No, stop. And that is going to be the end of this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs>